We all probably know that organizations need to win today's race while running tomorrow's and technology solutions are certainly the key to determining who leaps across the finish line. But exactly what does it take for an organization to be future ready? Is automation really the key to it? I have a great panel joining me here today who are going to talk us through this and more. So let's hear it from them. May I welcome the leaders from the Intelligent Automation Practice at PwC India. Sumit Srivastav, Mahesh Parab, Ritesh Jain and Hari Prasad Gajapati. Welcome everybody. So Sumit, if I can come to you first. The very ecosystem of businesses is changing today. And with that, the essence of automation has also evolved. What are some of those key trends that you're seeing emerging among the industry today? There was a very interesting question which was put in a recent 26 EU survey where the question was in terms of what are the key trends which are going to impact profitability of businesses in the next 10 years. And the CEOs responded in the order that the top four themes are in terms of the changing customer preferences, the changing uh, landscape of regulations, the skill shortages and the technology disruption. Now, if you look at what's happening in the automation landscape, uh, how the evolution of the products have happened, they have moved from simple automation of processes to more complex rule-based automations by bringing human in the loop as well. Today, OCR technologies have become smart enough to extract information from documents, be it structured or unstructured. You've got cognitive automation which can bring in business insights from the processes which you're automating. And on top of that, you can have conversational AI which can actually help bring interaction with your end customers in a seamless fashion. Now, if you look at the, how the evolution of technology has happened and map it back in terms of the four key trends which is going to impact the business's profitability, today I can bring in these automation technologies to redefine the customer processes to make it more aligned to the changing customer behaviors and patterns what they are seeing. You can actually bring in better scalability in your model of how you are responding to changes in the regulations without disrupting your core systems and coupled with that you can also bring in a model where you can have a citizen developer model where you can effectively train your uh, existing workforce more because of the low code no code technology aspects which are now available to ensure they can deliver the services to the customer without disrupting the current ecosystem of your workforce. Now, Clearly, as automation is able to help on the critical drivers for businesses, it is not just going to help them in terms of bringing in operational efficiency, but better productivity and profitability as well. And hence, what we are also seeing is in lot many cases, the agenda is moving away from a COEs to a CEO agenda, where today it is a clear boardroom agenda in terms of how you can bring in an automation program into your organization at scale at an enterprise level to drive their business objectives. And that's interesting. If I can come to you, Mahesh, and we delve a little deeper into the value proposition part of it. Um, how do CEOs really realize the value of scale and speed uh, with their automation programs? If I really look at your question and split that into two parts and start with the first one, which is a scale. Yeah. The core of the scale based and automation is a value driven proposition. I guess we all started with a bot theory. Can we really change the mindset from bot theory to the value proposition? That's the answer to the scale. And if I really guide the organization, organization should pick up the automation which can bring the business outcomes like increasing operational efficiency, enhancing customer experience and indirectly, directly bringing the revenue growth. That will bring a value onto the table. If you really want to think of practically to bring this value in the automation landscape, just developing a RPA based solution will not suffice. We have to add many more technologies. RPA created a good foundation block, you know, uh, to automate manual processes, bring a good uh, range of efficiency. But if you append that, if you enhance that with a conversational AI, generative AI, some of the business integration technologies, you know, it will help me to pick up the complex use case and unlock the new possibilities. So value along with the technology will help me scale the automation. If I really now move towards the speed, and the third one which cut across scale and speed both, which is us building a right pipeline of the automation. That's where use of process discovery, process mining technology comes in handy. If you select a right set of use cases, which brings high impact on you know, your business outcomes, your automation journey will be smooth. 
So this third pillar will help me to not only scale but also achieve the speed. And to give a, another boost in the speed, the utilities, assets, lots of reusable you know, uh, bots which we can create will definitely add a value. And all these four gametes together can help scale at speed. In essence, you're saying end-to-end -end automation transformation where you're mining, optimizing, automating, and then eventually scaling. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if I can uh, ask you, Ritesh, we, know, we spoke about the four pillars. Um, there is no fit for all formula for the businesses, right, across industries. What are some of those business models that you are seeing uh, being adopted by organizations today? So, Disha, that's a pretty, pretty broad uh, contour, I would say, right? Because if you look at it, automation is having its Jarvis moment right now. <laughs> Everyone is talking about automation as a driving force uh, and Gen AI has helped the cause. Everyone believes that automation can have a major transformation or major implications for our business. Right from cost takeout to customer acquisition to aspects like better employee productivity, employee engagement. And while we do that, um, I have been talking to various customers and they're talking about new business models getting evolved. Uh, pay as you go, timeshare kind of model, talking about can a consulting firm take end-to-end -end accountability for a business outcome. And in this entire construct, the business models are becoming a lot more process redefinition, domain-led, because a lot of ecosystem thus far has been focused on the tech capability. But we are at an interesting evolution point in which a domain-centric, enabled by the tech ecosystem, is going to drive how automation of today is going to look like. So I guess uh, to kind of summarize to your question, the business model is changing. Outcome, innovation, lower cost, pay as you go are becoming very, very important building blocks for any business. And while doing all of that, ensuring that the customer touch point improves. Up until maybe two, three years back, customer would say either I'm looking at a cost takeout or a, a customer satisfaction improvement. Now organization needed both and at a much cheaper cost. So we need to evolve as an industry to provide that benefit to our customers. Sure. And if my understanding is correct, with all of this, I think we need to bring in a perspective of governance as well, you know, to deliver a successful automation program. So if I can come to you, Hari, and from your perspective, do organizations really need to embed certain guardrails within their automation program? Of course they do. Interesting you mentioned that automation is having its Jarvis moment, right? You need a Tony Stark to govern their jobs, right? Uh, put in simple terms, uh, it's not rocket science. If organizations are able to assess the impact of automation on its processes, on its people, on aspects of data security, and more importantly, the customer experience, they understand and assess the impact, that's a quick win for them. Two, they need to put in place, or rather develop robust governance frameworks that lies down the protocol in terms of what an implementer, what a reviewer, or what even the end user needs to follow to ensure that it's a smooth life cycle from start to finish. The third aspect in terms of ensuring that there is a risk aware culture as well, right? Now with automation coming in, obviously it's gonna open up a Pandora of risks. Some new risks, some existing risks, while it mitigates some. But if you are able to inculcate that risk culture within its people, promote uh, you know, active conversations around what the automation risks are and how they could potentially be mitigated, that itself is another guardrail. More importantly, it's not just one Tony Stark. You need Tony Starks from the business side, you need a Tony Stark from the IT side, and a Tony Stark from a risk compliance audit side. If you're then able to put an end-to-end -end lens on automation, you are then in the right path to say, these are the guardrails. Remember, creating a risk mindset or even setting guardrails, it's an ongoing and a continuous process. So collaboration, continuous improvement, right? And ensuring that these guardrails are sustainable will become all the more important to ensure 
automation really flourishes in the organization you know as organizations have evolved in their automation journey they need to keep relooking at their governance uh, you know framework to ensure that effectively the additional risks which are coming into the mm. organization is uh, you know also uh, get taken care of because it's not a one time job you say i've got a governance set and then you know it's done and dusted it's something which you have to keep on revisiting it's a living uh, document on that itself you know rightly said sumit so automation governance or the framework itself it's a living framework living document playbook call it what you may if you are able to assess your failures and preempt you know what could eventually happen with new technologies coming in from a gen ai perspective people are talking about ethical responsible ai right for that you need to understand the technology itself but the fact that you need to continuously review your existing governance framework to ensure that is in line with the emerging technologies and with the emerging skill sets from a people standpoint and the way processes are changing will become all the more important and that's why i said it's a continuous improvement that you need to do on the governance piece so thanks for adding that on hari and uh, if i were to conclude this conversation uh, for today i wouldn't be wrong if i would say that automation is certainly key to drive the future of organizations and with that they can definitely achieve the scale that they're looking for and having certain business models in place would definitely help along with a robust governance framework to complete uh, the success of the automation program with that we come to the end of this episode but i promise to be back once again with this panel with more